Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah? can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. There could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. I hope I'm not betraying my excitement when I say we're going to be executing today's program with mathematical precision. I'll be kicking things off by asking a direct question. Are Nigerians afraid of a revolution? Then I'll be passing the ball to Shegun. Oh yeah, the very one. You may have guessed. Today he'll be turning the spotlight on our future generations by challenging, are we playing football with our future? Chuka turns our attention to a dying institution, the monarchy. Is it one we care enough about to preserve or even resuscitate? Ireti pulls one out of her life's journal. She shares a common danger from a personal experience. Uche closes things out by serving us the bill, and it reads, the cost of westernization. Well, the whistle has been blown. Let the conversations begin. So we identify our fears, we're in danger of being manipulated by them. We've spent the last three weeks discussing and dissecting the meaning and import of using the R word in a climate such as ours, and we're far from exhausting our appetite for this, for, for this particular controversy. Some would even have us believe that the R word, revolution I mean, is akin to striking a match in a fuel-drenched terrain. I'll tell you what I think. We've morphed into a fearful people. Afraid to believe anything enough to stand or even protest for it. We make excuses for why we should be careful of this or that, and yet we complain bitterly at the least opportunity. Revolution simply means doing a 360, a turnaround on ourselves, because we finally come to our senses to recognize that we're getting it devastatingly wrong. Many would readily agree to that, that we're getting it devastatingly wrong, and have been for a while now. Yet we become philosophical when it comes to demanding what, that we deserve better. We're like an emotionally traumatized person who vacillates between one moment feeling enough is enough and the next is weighed down by a jitteriness that says, preserving the status quo is better than rocking the boat. As a people, we're torn between severing the umbilical cord from a generation that has passed its sell-by date and going full throttle into a millennial unknown future. Yet, we must break free. A child that remains in the womb beyond its delivery date is not only overdue, but becomes an endangered species, putting both the life of the child and the mother at risk. It doesn't have a happy ending. Whether we start a protest or not, we must become people of conviction. We attend so many seminars, and yet it feels as though knowledge is being poured into a porous container. Where is the effect of this disseminated knowledge, I ask? Everyone is an expert clutching a microphone on television or social media platforms as a status symbol that says, I've arrived. And yet we're all on a vessel labeled destination nowhere. It's time to do a personal sober stock take of our lives. Except we individually become a people of conviction, um, by that I mean living and dying by our beliefs, there's no point speaking or even whispering the word revolution, as we're incapable of doing a 90 degrees turn, let alone a 360. That's my position. I mean, you must remember that um, you, you, as, you can only be as free as, as, um, well, society, as, as, allows as society allows you. Isn't that another excuse? That's, it, it's not. It's the truth. Um, I know some things that if I do, I won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> I That's also what I say, living and dying. I'm, I'm not so sure that I don't want to be here tomorrow. Maybe for my children. Maybe for other reasons. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't know. It, it, you know. So I'm not saying that I don't love Nigeria, but really, Nigeria is not safe. But maybe you don't love Nigeria enough. No, to, Nigeria is to not put safe. yourself or your life on the, line on the line in order to rescue no, no, no. it. I can put my life on the line, but not with 
not in the situation we have where it's almost like I'm, you know, it's like murder. People who were, yes, I'm not. Suicide. I want to kill myself. But let me give you an illustration. But so I will die. So I, I allow. So I want to hear what you all have. To, please. No, but, uh, but okay, an illustration very quickly. You know, I say, for example, they say the situation you set yourself up. Maybe you park somewhere and they tell you you've parked in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. and the next thing you know, they're looking for bribe from you. Mm -hmm. Whether you're right or wrong, most times they're just making it up. But you don't want to stress yourself. And I've been in that situation. So you 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 opt for the bribe. What if you opted not to bribe? I haven't bribed, and it puts me through a lot of stress. But that for me is, I, I don't believe in bribing, so I'm ready to go through the stress of not bribing. But other people say, ah, and that's not even coming close to killing yourself, mm. it's just an inconvenience. Mm. Mm. But I, but Different I think, skills. Yeah, yeah. I, I, if I'm, so I need to understand what, you, what you're saying in your script is what, is that we need to be. That in order for change to happen, right. you need to live and die by your convictions. Correct. Well, okay, we had this discussion here before, remember? Mm. We had the discussion about whether some of our heroes, when I did that one on our heroes, mm. whether they died for their conviction, and if, 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 if you remember, know, the question was, was it, <laughs> is it that you go out yeah. to, to <laughs> die, you know, knowing that you're going to die, or you go out to just revolt, mm. you know, and if death comes along, so be it. Yeah. And, and I think that's what that's the way you've got to take. Because first, I do agree with Papion. Look, there's a sense of responsibility to everything. And with liberty comes responsibility. That must be the the finding, I should say the background by which all of what we want to do is done. So if you think about it, I have a responsibility. However, I do have a conviction. My responsibility doesn't handicap me from doing my conviction. However, I will revolt in the most responsible way possible. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to break rules. But what it does mean is, if death comes along, so it is like, it was Abiola we were talking about, yeah, that's right. Yes. And we said, you know, I don't think Abiola set out to die, but she wasn't afraid of death when he mm. got to it. Mm. And, so, and that's about conviction. That's about that self-conviction. Mm. Um, I'm kind of bored with this word revolution because I think they've overused it in Nigeria in the last three weeks, and nobody's really actually revolting yeah. as they never do yeah. the only revolution we're having is Amala <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but you get me yeah but, I get you but you get what I'm saying no I get what you're saying you but I think so no but you see that we're I, not ready right. Right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I can't yeah. no, no, right. that we're not ready though no no no, no, no. We're, we're not we're not, not revolting no. no. you see the, the difference with Amala what you're saying and what Chuka was saying was that I think in your case it's not like they're going out to die no but this they have accepted die. that if, if that, that's one of the consequences of you know but chuka is saying that he doesn't Not even yeah that's the way I, i've read what you're saying yeah. and yeah. i feel that if no, well not totally i'm not saying that i will not die for nigeria even in the circumstances that i see that yeah. it's not an easy country to deal with right now all i was saying is i will still measure my Exactly, well, and and so but, if but you're wanting to die, yes. yes. <laughs> but there, are, but there are, but put it this way: there are times that you are actually, you you, you know, you just disregard everything and you just go out. So what mm. is it that's going to make me? It's conviction. Go it's out. that conviction. So it means that something has to happen to trigger, to the push right you thing. to that place. But right you know, now, nothing is happening to trigger. Why? Well, no, because serious? no, the reason, no, the reason is triggered. No, the reason Chuka, no, Chuka <laughs> isn't no, triggered. The is triggering is Chuka, Chuka has kind talk, of given to... up, as far as I, my impression. <laughs> Tell, correct Happy. me if I'm wrong. Happy. I think you've kind of given idea. up in a sense, and that's the reason why you are not even triggered to do anything. Many of us are in that state where we're just not moved to do anything anymore because we just kind of feel like it's futile. But I agree, like, you got to look at uh, the case of South Africa, for instance, when things were really, really bad. It took a man who was prepared. He had family just like you, wife, everything, short children, grandchildren. But he decided that he was going to go the whole hog. And it was big. And do you know how many years did it take? But we mustn't compare Nigeria to South Africa. It's a different thing. But, but I, do you I, not feel I that? Go, no. You, no, you no, don't, no, you no, don't no, feel? No, I want to be the only man who has dedicated Dedicated a lot of his life to Nigeria, service to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. How would you feel? What I, how I think now is, if you're going to have a revolution, there has to be an agenda. There has to be a motive. You Thank want, you. You want yeah, a I change. Agree. Yes. And everybody must understand, understand what that change is means. and line up yes. behind you. Yes. In this case, 
there is no definite agenda. May, may yes. I just it is just the He's hopelessness right. of the frustration yes. or the frustration yes. of the yes. hopelessness yes. Yes. that yes. is making people to just get yes. up and say, we want to revolt. I'm sorry, no, no, I have to say, I have to say, I have to say that doesn't stand with me simply because you take the example of the 70-year-old woman that was beaten up. She just, I don't know if you've read that. There's a 70 year old man who is selling a car or what she was selling. Mm, she comes by, she, she sees the, the protesters. Oh, yeah, yeah. She says, What are you protesting about? She hears them. She says, Yes, those things affect me. She puts her car and joins them. They beat her up. She says, mm. They ask her, Do you know the show Ray for whom you were getting? She goes, I don't know who he is, but if they do a protest again, I will join again. Mm -hmm. We all know why we are frustrated. I am mm. triggered. I don't need all this agenda because mm. when I look at countries, look at China and Hong Kong, I mean, Hong Kong rather, when you look at places where revolutions ignite, they're not really looking for this. This organization is yeah, mm. kind of breaking. No, no, but, but you, you draw, you draw you up the this only science. national hero we have on this panel. <laughs> no, no, I'm still I'm I'm in Nigeria and I must be no, 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 If you are looking at the issues, what is what, what, what needs to be clear? What, what issue do you want to now point out? While we're busy having meetings and committees, things are getting worse. I have to. I agree with Ekene, to be honest. And I think I think if we are if we're being wimpy or being cowed. Let's just it's start. Admit, no, I think to a degree. Tell yourself the truth. It's not about, it's it's about I believe that. Yes, I agree with Shagun that it's really yeah. about articulating before moving. Mm. Okay, Absolutely. look at look at the, Absolutely. look at Hong Kong. Okay. Hong Kong is going to is, is a, that's just a waste. Chica, I don't agree. You don't have to no, but they know what they started. Everybody knows, started with. Everybody knows where the their shoes, pictures. They don't really need me to. I'm just maybe I'm just hijacking that movement and also trying to get my own revolution across. I just think it's longer. I don't know. We can't keep I, using, I think using uh, this. Uh, I, no, I, allow me to if how, just please, support. Please go ahead. I have to support. And I'm sorry, yes, I'm fanzing right now, my national hero. At least he said so. Yeah. <laughs> At least he <laughs> said so. That's I'm a bit embarrassing, I'm fanzing. Yes, fam. You know, and those of you who don't know, this is one of our greatest footballers. And it's so surprising. But honestly, let me let me agree with you. And and I agree with we you in the sense more. that <laughs> in, the, in the sense that when when you set out for a revolution, oh, I'm so bored with that word. Can we find something else? Mm -hmm. Honestly, That's when, you set, yeah, <laughs> when you set out for a revolution and you're taking, your, because the idea is to galvanize people to stand up and get up and follow you, you have a sense of responsibility to be clear on that what we want, the yeah. best to have, the nice to have, and the least we will get. Yeah. Unless that is clear. You are being irresponsible. Okay, mm -hmm. each to True. their own. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, we've all had enough. I can I'm on the side of the Akara woman. I'm on the side. I come on your side. I know you'll be on the side of Akara. Is it not? No, I agree with you. No, but you should interview. You love that woman to death. I just like the way she comes. The way she communicated. Yeah, they beat her up. She couldn't even go back the next day. She was sore. But she said the next protest, she's going to. I will be there. So who is the show? I don't even know who he is. Okay. I was so looking forward to a full-on discussion, and I wasn't disappointed. Shagun Odewami, that is, takes things to the next level as he turns our minds to the future after the break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, right. strategy. Like a terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You are watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Today, I want to ask the question, are we playing football with our future? It's now almost 12 years since soccer was launched. Soccer, by the way, is Shegun or Degbam International College and Sports Academy. It is Nigeria's first multi-sports, fully-fledged co-educational secondary school. And I still marvel that such projects are still making headlines as Nigeria's firsts. Surely, it isn't rocket science that the very youths repeatedly laud and proclaim, parade and eulogize as our future are worthy of our investment today. 
Why are we as a people so short-sighted? It is as if we are fixated on harvesting before we sow seed. We want to chop, but no one wants to step into the kitchen. Soccer is about inspiring and fueling the dreams of our youths that they can still venture out into the new world of discovery and creativity. It took sacrifice, but it was so worth it. Nothing good ever came without some degree of sweat and application, which is the measure of how much we value what we are sweating for in the first place. Why do we let destructive politics interfere with everything productive in our society? Is politics not meant to be about administration and service of the people, by the people? I'm a much more pragmatic person today than I once was. I want to provoke us as people to be more pragmatic for the good of our future. The one thing I can say that I have mastered is the art of managing loss, since losing is an inevitable part of sports. I have said and still say today, you cannot win if you are not prepared to lose and go beyond it. So as a people, we must master the art of converting our losses to fuel future success. Nigeria needs this of us. What dreams are you harboring? Why have you put it on the back burner? Do not let the tales of loss distract you from pushing forward and converting your losses to a future success that will not just impact your life, but your nation and our future generation. Very good. It's, it looks like you, you know you were waiting for us to have the last argument, <laughs> and, and then finally tell us exactly. this is what this is the way to go. Know, why are things on the back burner? Why have you let things go backwards? You know, are you ready to lose? Because if you are not, you are, then you can't even then go, don't go there to try to win. You know, it's all like what we were yeah, saying. Yeah, I gave you because side eyes things. when you said that. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't give you it back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 some of the research I did, yes. you know, that inspired me a bit when I, I, I was listening to what you were saying right. is that, you know, you had gone through, he had gone through a, a challenge because he had wanted to be, is it chairman of the Incan? So many. So many. Okay, but they played politics on him. And chairman of that, he lost president out. of yeah. FIFA. And he went in there thinking, oh, surely I have something to offer. Surely they will let me in. And only to get there, and you found that they outmaneuvered him. They dribbled him. Yes, yes. <laughs> so he found himself in a political situation where he, he never stood a chance. Yeah. So he you said, see, he, yeah. What Nigerians should learn from those of us who have been in sport is that, as they say in the Olympics, you do not come first to be a winner. You can always win without coming first. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and, Very much so. And once you don't come first, that means that mm. you have failed somehow. Mm -hmm. So failure actually is the tonic that drives us mm. to want to succeed. So mm -hmm. I look at Nigeria and see how chaotic it is, all mm -hmm. the crises and all of that. Mm -hmm. And all I see are possibilities of making heroes Come on. out of so many people. Yes. Yeah. Because the environment is so full of Opportunity. Opportunity. Yeah. Based on people's failure. Yeah. I mean, still telling your story. Because when he said he stood on that patch of ground that he made his school and he saw it and, you know, he licked his wounds. But that was when he began to, I think that's when you, you began to do this to, to get back at the fact that you felt you'd wasted all your money campaigning for something that really, you know, you, you weren't in a position Where's to Where's the school? The school is in Wasimi, near Abelkuta. Okay. Okay. And um, it's a model. Right. Actually, for... Nigerians to see the possibility, particularly our young people, Absolutely. to see the possibility yeah. of combining their passion, yes. Yes. which is in and sports, education which is in at football, the same time. and their need, which is, which is education, education. Mm -hmm. yes. because that's the key. I'll tell you why yeah. um, I, I, I really, I mean, I think the part of the school is even the part that captures me most, because when you said it's amazing how schools like this are still being lauded as the first in 21st century, you know, in 19, 2000 and, you know, sort of thing. And you think, what, what is wrong with us? Because it's true, you know, if there's one thing we do that does, um, how should we say, unite us is sports. Yes. If there's a sport that unites us, it's football. Mm -hmm. And there were days, years, back in the day when Nigerians used to play cricket. Mm -hmm. there, there's a rugby team, there's a, um, 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 a netball, mm -hmm. You know, basketball, papi. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, yes, accept it. Yes. We play basketball as well. No, yes. and, and you wonder to yourself, 
why aren't those academies normal? Because they should have been normal. Mm -hmm. My son plays basketball. He plays basketball for his school. He's young. He and his friend um, were supposed to go to the States. Self-funded, he didn't end up going Kusu. We spent neither. Anyway, <laughs> that's another matter. But his friend went, and they went to this summer camp, and they got a scholarship. Now, the friends is in the States because they were both the two best basketball players in their school. Mm -hmm. Now, the friend is in the States. He's been there for like a year now, Frank, and he's, he's doing very well. And I, and I actually said to him, what do you like about it? And he said, Auntie, I'm learning and also doing something I love, which is basketball. Mm -hmm. And I think it's those schools that we need because we have to learn that not everybody must do science. Mm, yeah. Not everybody wants to do maths. <laughs> Whatever talent our children have, what they have, we must encourage nurture. and nurture them whilst still getting an education yeah. at the same time. And you see, the world, the way it was when we were growing up, yes. is totally different Absolutely. from the way the, the world is today. Yeah. 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 Sport at the time was seen for, for what it was, yes. just developing young people, winning trophies and medals, yeah, making your that. name. Yeah. But sports now is huge business. It is. Yeah. Sports now is health. Yes. Sports now is the environment. It's a matter sports of life. now yeah. is life. Yeah. Sports now is so much more yeah. that a Nelson Mandela it's could get up statement. and say that sport has the power to change yes, the world. It does. Mm -hmm. So, it does. you see, there's this huge opportunity that we need to open the eyes of the present generation to so that they can capitalize on it mm -hmm. and change this country. Yeah. 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 I mean, it does baffle me that, um, you know, we are not investing in sports mm -hmm. the way we should. Yeah. Um, you only have to look at, like, for instance, if, um, in America or even in, in the UK mm -hmm. to an extent, when you're, you look at a group of people that... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not doing too well. They're not, you know, sports is a way to lift them oh, yeah. out of, course, of, of course, that poverty. Of now, mm. we have an abundance. I mean, I think Nigerians are naturally gifted, yeah. you know, in that area. And so it amazes Clearly me that... Clearly not in revolution. But, in that <laughs> <area>. <laughs> so, but it is amazing that we're not, you know, using that aspect. Because yeah. sports for us would be a great export. Mm. It would be a great way to lift Uniting. people out of poverty. Mm. Yeah. It, you know, like you said, sports is about health, it's about discipline. It does so much. so much. So, you know, it's, I don't know why we're so careless with the obvious gifts and talents that... Um, because we're too busy stealing. Yeah, <laughs> but, but that's you, I mean, you find it difficult to... Well, well, I, mean, I, mean, I guess honest. you've given me the... That's uh, I mean, but, but it's very I'm difficult. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm curious. Um, let's talk about your football a bit. <laughs> you know, but I, I want to ask him about, you know, <laughs> what does it feel like winning for Nigeria? No, seriously. No, no, no. Because we all Sorry. feel... Like Nigeria hasn't won for us, in yet a long you've time. won for Nigeria. How does that feel? Well, now looking back, yeah, and with what I know now, um, there's no greater feeling than doing things for your country. Excellent. Happy, are you hearing? No, <laughs> you know, you um, a lot of great things. <laughs> no, please go on. <laughs> you know, when we started, you wouldn't appreciate it as much as you do now. Mm. Yes. The connection between you, the individual and your country, yeah. because it's the connection between you and the world, yeah. Yeah. really. Yeah. So to now do things for your country and to win mm. is the greatest honor mm. that anybody can give to a country and the country can give back to him. So that's how I see myself. Do you feel they appreciated you, though, when you reached? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I think so. Up till now. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, yeah. no. Yeah. There are those who don't you know, feel appreciated. No, we yeah. we appreciate you. It, it may not be in Naira yes, and Kobo exactly. terms. No. Yes. But you were lauded. No, absolutely, up to mm. now, yeah. everywhere I go. Well, I mean, and it's not yeah. just me. Yeah. It's, it's all the sports, it's oh, all the sports time. heroes yes. to different degrees. Mm. But at the end of the day, we don't convert this into to anything. living. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, because I was going to ask into him living. on the back of what Uche was saying, whether we had, you have issues getting sponsorship now, even yeah. for your school. Do you get much support? Yes, yes. <laughs> There's hardly any support. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. There's hardly any you support. See? But that's, no, but that's always what happens. Yeah, but that's the lack of appreciation mm. of what I told you about the power mm. of sports. Yeah. Now in schools, you hardly find any more sport. Yeah. Is it that yeah. we don't know? Exactly. Yeah, Is it don't. that we don't know? We've just discussed it here yeah. and yes. we all feel yes. the same way. Yes. But go to the average school. Even the private that ones that you're paying for. The private ones don't even have land. Yeah. Absolutely. When yeah. they So, achieve goals are usually a product of targets we have set for ourselves. Chuka. 
focuses our attention to avoid death by neglect after the break. I prefer prevention to cure, don't you? The king is dying. I have always been interested in monarchies and aristocracy. I cannot quite explain why, as I am fully aware that they are anachronistic institutions of very little actual merit. But it was the way most peoples were led. Mostly a hereditary type with eldest sons ascending on the death of their parent monarch. It is history. I was brought up to realize these things. In actual fact, I would be the beneficiary of such an arrangement. Yes, shock horror. I am of aristocratic lineage, but not royalty. But let's get on, let's get on with it. I am dismayed by the manner in which state governors, especially in the north of Nigeria, have formed a habit of rubbishing the monarchs in that area. Reasons are given, even as much as monarchs aiding banditry, but I cannot help but wonder if these aren't really just crazy governors. It is imperative that these institutions are led by noble and gallant people. Stories of a top Yoruba king being sponsored or imposed by a political godfather is demeaning to say the least. This especially because the system of ascendancy in this area is by competition. In the case of hereditary ascendancy, as in my humble ancestral home or Benin, the matter is a lot more precise. A prince is prepared from birth for the rule. There is so much that this institution could add to our tourism potential and our cultural relevance globally. But with all things Nigeria, we fail yet again. So while princes and princesses, kings and queens, dukes and earls form a great part of the heritage of great nations, ours flounder. It is time we spelled out their novelty value, their cultural value, and work at preserving their titles, abodes, and relics. We lack museums to display their treasures, which I presume are fast disappearing. Do not say I do not care about our heritage. <laughs> Who wants to start? Prince, <laughs> Prince Papi or Prince Chuka, I, I, what I'm do we call say you? No, 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 I'm a duke, I'm a duke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a duke of Belize. I'm a guashu. But you know what, Chuka, right? <laughs> the, reason, the reason why I think um, we don't really take our monarchy really seriously in this country is really for the reason you just, <laughs> by pointing out that you have aristocratic, <laughs> it's the kind of thing like, when I you know, went to school abroad, practically everybody claimed to be a princess. Or, okay. you know, so, yeah, or a prince, <laughs> you know, and it, it just got to the point where we now sounded ridiculous. Even right. those of us that did have a legitimate claim, exactly. you know, we, it sound, we just made it, we belittled it. Yeah. Now, before you can do that in the UK or something, you know, then you have to see the lineage and they, yeah. before they will even answer, what is it that these countess or whatever, yeah, they have to, right. you, they have to yeah. um, justify it. Mm. So I think we've belittled that already. But what I do like with the... Now, uh, Eretta, please don't kill me, because oh, I know I'm about to say oh, really? a Yoruba word. Please oh, don't I'll kill me. Out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oni. Oni. Yes. Thank you. Right. Oni. oni. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so oni. I like, okay. what I like about the Oni yes. of Oni. Yes. Oni. Yes. Thank yes. you. Right. Is that he's now creating that whole, you know, mystique. <laughs> and he is actually, <laughs> you may not like him. Yeah. Don't, don't. Don't, don't okay. miss what I'm saying Papi's because you don't like, like him. Oh, no, no, but carry on. try to no, understand no, no, no. what I'm saying. I, I, a because he's, like a, he's a young man <laughs> and he's um, also, you know, he's very traditional in the way he goes about things. He's raising awareness in the way. The, I didn't know much about, uh, you know, Yoruba people, Yoruba culture, if not for this um, monarch, you know. And then I saw a video of him. I think he had just arrived in Canada. Canada. And, and people were prostrating and falling on the floor. And, and I looked at this and I thought, I don't know, I shouldn't normally be appalled by this, but in a way I'm kind of like proud that we, you know, we do have a monarch that creates this kind of, uh, you know, attention and everything. So I, I like that, what you've said, and, you know, we need to raise awareness and try and, you know, create value for our monarchy. And he is doing that. So you shouldn't be frowning upon, <laughs> okay, you know, let me, frowning at let, me, let me just make you know, a point. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Chuka. Mm -hmm. yes. You want to come back on the on, on yes, yes, I will just, come back because I, I know he I, can't I, wait. I was just going to read something from a newspaper, That's and then after that, we can carry on. Okay. Um, the Awujale of Ijebu at the recent festival, and he says, do not politicize the process. Ojude Oba Festival. 
Okay, no, not, don't worry about that. Get away with Do it. not <laughs> politicize the process of selecting my successor. Yeah. Do not go for people that would draw a jebu backwards. Um, do not go for money bags that would destroy the achievements and so on and so on. Reject him and go for a ruling house. If if a next ruling house does not present a viable candidate, please reject him and go for a ruling house with a capable candidate. Now, for a, reign, a reigning monarch, mm. and I think he's a fairly big one in Yoruba land. He's um, 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 not fairly. You know, you know. He's big. Yes. Yes, um, uh, I, I actually respect him more than yes, uh, only. the one you were talking about. Yeah. Yes, um, huh? the, the one where Uche was even talking for about. Age, yes, mm -hmm. even for age, I'm older than Leoni, so I mean, I, you I can't. Just, uh, let's, I, not get, let's not get sidetracked. So, let's not. So <laughs> I, I am. In, you see, for him mm. to do this, this this is um, Wednesday newspaper I just mm. read from, and um, it just fits in with what I just wanted to do here. It tells you that there is a problem. Even a reigning monarch, the Abuja of Ijebuland, is begging people, please, don't let my successor be put in my money bags. Don't let he himself be a money Lower bag. Himself. It means don't let the institution be corrupted. carry on. No, it has been corrupted. Mm. He's trying to say it has to stop. Okay. But okay, let me say... No, that's not what he said. Yes. He was no. just reminding us. He was just us. reminding yes. us. Reminding yes. us because yes. it is something we have forgotten. Yes. That this is our greatest strength mm. yes. as black people Cor on yes. Earth. Yes, I agree. Our culture. Yes. yes. So we must sustain it. Yeah. We yeah. must make sure but we don't said, divert yes. but away I, from the ways yes. of... They distracted from... Yes, yes. of yes. succession. Yes. yes. And what he did yes. is not to warn, yes. is to remind us that we should do it correctly. Yes. The Omolu Abi way. Yes, way. Way. Okay. It's yeah. just reminding yeah. us. Yeah. But you when you say remind, I'm just trying to not let it remind look like something isn't wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? He is still, it's still <coughs> it's ongoing. It's, it, he knows that it's uh, been. We've just I, I, I want, I want, I want um, I can I say, uh, yeah, please let me say it and then <laughs> I'll, I'll give you room. Speak. I'll yeah. give the floor to you. Um, so essentially, I'm thinking that you also touched on this and it's possible we're just expanding on what you've already said. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody wants, if so, an institution wants to be respected, they first have to respect themselves. Yeah. So you see the situation with Sanusi and Ganduje in the north. Correct. You know, someone like Sanusi, from what I hear, he played politics to get into the position. Yay or nay, I, I don't know. But the point is, the reason he's in the position he is in is that he's strayed into the political sphere. He started saying, I want to endorse, I don't want to endorse. So what you expect from monarchs when you look at the queen in England is that abstain, don't mm -hmm. take a position. Because you're not meant to be one APC or PDP. They look, the people are looking to you as a figurehead to you a bit of jail. Yeah. So once you get into that zone, you, you go down mm -hmm. there, you get muddied. So you know, these are the issues we have. I'm not really a fan of you know, prostrating to me. I just feel when you start yeah. giving people this kind of, yeah, you're born with a title, yeah. they tend to abuse it like all things. But I see the value in it. That's why I'm saying I'm flowing yeah. with your yeah. article. Cultural because I say value. it's something yeah. that you need, we do need role models. Mm. And if these people can uphold and, uh, you know, because I know a monarch who is very careful to avoid getting involved in all things politics yeah. so that he can maintain his own influence when it matters. He doesn't want yeah, anybody I mean, to I see it. If we give you the yeah. model of um, like the Igbo monarch, you have the Eze, who is pretty much a figurehead. Then you have the SS council. And those are the people really that generally take the, the decisions. decisions. Yeah. So, and, and those are usually learned people, people, you know, the, of repute. So yeah. I think that's kind of buttressing just what Ekene said. Let, don't, don't stray into just Just to politics. wrap it up, I think we've kind of got apples and eggs mixed up, okay. is what I think, especially when it comes to Yoruba monarchs. So you have the Awujale. He is the paramount ruler of Ijebu land. End of. There's no negotiating. Then you have the only, which is all titles, by the way. They are the positions. Who is all of Yoruba land? When they prostrate, it doesn't matter whether you like him, loathe him, fall in love with him, think he's the best looking guy, or he's a rat. You are prostrating for His the office. position, for the office, mm. not for the, the person, human being, mm. right? When people curtsy to the queen, it's not about Elizabeth. Mm. It's about the fact I know. of our office. I know right? that, yeah. So we, we can't, so when people say, oh, I don't feel comfortable about it. I have a friend who became a king who was younger than me. I still do Kabiesi. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, Papi, do, uh, I can't do that. Yeah, you're a Republican, though. Yeah. Yeah. You are a Republican. <laughs> I, I brought so, up this topic. Yeah. <laughs> well, Carry on. Yeah. 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 So we must, and then when you talk about politics, we, we must remember that back in the day, the Kabiesis, the rulers, so Uche touched on something. We have our royalty will never be like the, the, the royalty of the West because there are so many royal lands and mm. royal houses and that's just the way Africa is. Yes, that's correct. the way Nigeria is. Yeah. But if you take it back to the old days, 
the upper was the politician. Mm -hmm. The kings, things, decisions were made at the palace. Back then, that, yes. that that's the same as abroad as well. That affected, yes. that affected, evolution has exactly. even, driven them even, out. Even, even Obas were premiers. Thank you, they were premiers. premiers. Yes. Yeah, but not anymore. So, not, yeah, anymore. But no, say, no, but, not anymore. But what happened is, yeah, but the reason, what's happened is, where we've gone into Western democracy, the Obas are, are refusing to let go of, of their, their political powers influence. because they still want to be. I get you must remember that they all get allocation as well. Mm. That's I the part it. I was going to end it. with. Right. So where there's money, yeah. there's yeah. a way. There's, there's, a, there's yes. a way. Yes. There's a will as well. Yes. yes. Well, if we don't care about our heritage, who will? One thing we certainly care about is your feedback on why we must stop laughing with Nigerian comedians. AAM says, I don't know why people laugh when these comedians perform. They are bullies on educational system and the collapse of society. Suhaila Ibrahim says, I'm really glad that such a topic is being discussed. Kudos to Uche for bringing this up. It elaborates the root of a lot of problems we are facing today in society. The special one says, this show is classy and educative, but we shouldn't bring this snowflake nonsense to Nigeria. We still have 99 problems, and yabbing bow-legged people is not one of them. Hmm. Oh, gosh. I don't think uh, <laughs> this person <laughs> really <laughs> knows what is. <laughs> Thank you. Do keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. On Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, The Advocate NG, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Time for that quick break. Ireti warns of a danger many of us are living with after the break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very terrible. Backfire. Very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. My topic falls under the category of risk normalization. Today, I'm talking about living in a death trap. This past Sunday, my son and I woke to the voice of my friend screaming, Iriti Timile, wake up, wake up, the house is on fire. You have to get out. We both woke up to a raging fire which started in my housekeeper's room, probably due to the power fluctuations over the last two weeks in our area. That morning was no exception. Thankfully, we all made it out alive, uninjured, physically. The emotional injury will take some time to heal. But the healing has begun, and we thank God. Unlike everyone else, I guess as the matriarch of my home, sleeping at night with the lights off has become very difficult. But that's not my topic. Since the incident, a recurring theme that keeps coming up in this feeling of being caged and feeling trapped. Why do we have burglary proofs on top floor windows in Nigeria? Because at your level, people can come in. My son and I were saved by two critical factors. The one being the door of the room where the fire started was closed, which meant the fire was contained in that room for quite a while. So unable to spread outwards, the house, to spread outwards through the house and instead went to via the roof and spread that way. So number two, we didn't need to escape through the windows. Had the door to the housekeeper's room not been shut, my son and I would have been trapped in our rooms with no access to escape because the burglary rules, which were meant to keep intruders out, also became a death trap for those within. 
If we're to save lives during this kind of emergencies, we need to urgently find an alternative to permanent fixed metal rails, as we cannot continue to be prisoners in our own homes. Mm. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. But what are the options um, we have? It's either to improve you know, the security situation in the country, or maybe we'll come up with like laser Burglary, I don't know. Yeah, so it's, you know, you just put it on like you see in the Pink Panther and what have you. you know, because honestly, it, it's crazy. I know what you're saying, but it's almost like which one, which one Bombs do you, first. yeah, which one, how do you? Um, I'll tell you what it is. I ask, I've asked everybody, and you know, they say you don't, some things you don't think about until you go through it mm. yourself. Mm. Since when has burglary proof ever prevented any armed robbery? I don't know. Tell me when. Okay. No, no, tell me one instance where they said, ah, the armed robbers could not come, you know, because the burglary proof was there. You don't, because armed robbers know how to cut the burglary proof. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. They did it to my neighbor. Boom, boom, boom. Took it out, walked through the window. But that's also not what I'm saying. I'm even talking about the ground level. The minute somebody makes it to that close to be able to come up, forget it. They're already in your house. They're not the ones you're keeping out anymore. You're now keeping yourself trapped. So one of the things I'm asking is, yes, whilst fighting the bad guys, so to speak, we also have to think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And burglary proves we have to find smarter ways. You can have ones that locks. You can have one that you can open. Think of those who live yeah. in apartments. Yeah. I've known people who have actually died in fires now. I've had stories. Because the burglary proof, not because they, they could not get out, because they had been yeah, trapped. I, I, yeah. Sorry, taking a leaf yeah. out of your own script and what you said at the end, you know, I, I even said thinking, why don't we have, you said permanent. Yeah. There may be ones that you can fit and unfit, so that at least you have the power to, to fit, fit them in and unlock it. You know, so you, yeah. you protect yourself, but you also, you know, um, because I just think, and just going a bit further, it's still my own issue that I feel we don't think enough about yeah. our safety. Yeah. You know, and I think if we start thinking a bit like... Our safety, rather than keeping burglars yeah, out. I you think, know, you know, preserving you, you, our yeah. lives and planning, planning our, uh, our lives in such a way that it's fit for purpose. Mm. So we just do things sometimes. We just imit, do things. I don't know. We haven't processed it and we haven't planned and said, what are the consequences? What are the fallouts? Sometimes I worry about all these high-rise buildings with lifts, knowing that our power situation is so volatile. Imagine getting trapped... And then no power to come I down because for maybe a there was a fire. That happened you know? to me in Nigeria. And and what happened? Thank God I don't have what you call the claustrophobia. Mm. You know. No, you don't oh understand. yeah. Oh well, look, you can forget it. That would have you been were trapped the end in of the it. lift. Yeah, because the power there was a power outage and they couldn't get it up. And the UPS most lifts have UPS. Yeah, UPS that's, UPSs, yes. And the UPS failed, failed and everything. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Papi, you're an architect. Yes. Yes. What are you guys doing? I've had this conversation with yes, you. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I was just waiting to hear what the average man has to say. Okay, I have yeah. one uh, Question. other average thing to throw in. Because <laughs> um, I kind of think that apart from the burglary proof and the windows and all of that, I also think that we need to consider. Um, making other exits. Yes, you know, fire exits. I feel yeah. like um, many of us only have maybe one way in, one way out. Yes, um, no external. And they're all downstairs. Yes, yeah, no and, external. And, and they're all downstairs. Like, we had a fire, but I was telling, you know, yeah. Ireti, we had it about five uh, years ago, and it was because we had different exit routes. And even if we couldn't go out through those ones, we could have gone to the roof mm. because we yes. also had, a, yes. you know, and then we could have jumped from there, jumped into the balcony below and jumped out. So we could have found, you know. So I think people need to consider that, you know, that you shouldn't just have one way in and one mm. way out. Mm. Try and put, you know, mm. so here, yeah, yeah. go architect. You see, I remember way back, say, and it's not even way back, around about 1991, um, I was designing a house in Ikui. And then there were, you know, escape stairs and all that. Mm. We were very serious about it. Mm. And I put all the escape stairs in the building and everything. And then I suddenly started to notice that the planning officers were no longer looking for escape stairs. And I wondered why. And nobody was doing it. And I, I, I found out that it was basically for security reasons, this armed robbery. That yeah. armed robbery comes before fire yeah. Yeah. for some reason. Yeah, because maybe yeah. the likelihood of an armed robbery is higher than, higher that. than the yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah. So now they will pass. That's, that's why, um, to be precise, Iretis' house was such that two bedrooms on opposite sides and the staircase in the middle okay. meant that if you shut the doors of those rooms and open the door where the fire was, the fire would have taken over the mm -hmm. corridor and blocked off the stairs. Mm. Then you'd have wow. needed to open the window. We would have been window. trapped. Yeah, yeah. you'd have been trapped. And then if you had burglary if, proof. If that door had not been shut, 
I think it will be a completely different mm. story right. today. Mm. Um, you might either have to have run through the fire and oh. somehow made it. Which I did once. You, uh, okay. Uh -huh. Oh. Which I did so once. You know, it's not because jealous. Because as you were relaying your you story, really, yes. I just recalled what happened to me. Yeah. yeah. I went to the window, burglary proof, in there was house. a lock oh. in my house. There Brilliant. was a lock. Once with the lock. You, you spoke about temporary yes. things. Yes. Yes. There yes. was a lock. Great. He hadn't even tried or tested for many years. Oh, so we didn't was, even know was where, the, where yeah. the lock was anymore. Wow. So if was. I knew where, where the key was, yeah, if I knew, was, we could have done that and escaped. So how did you I had to out? run through the fire. Through the fire. Yeah. Because that was the only exit out of the bedroom. You and some other people, obviously. Just myself. Okay. Wow. Fortunately, I was alone in the house. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. I had to you run literally have to take that chance. Yes. yes. So uh, just thinking of what you said, it's a choice between the devil and the deep blue sea. Mm. You keep out the, the thieves, yes. but you see, you run the risk of something like the I, fire. I, I would rather not have... Um, uh, um, okay. What's it called? The the burglary burglary on, on the top on the, floor. On the first floor. Once yeah. you go above the ground floor, I, right. I, I do think it's a death trap. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know. Yeah, no, it is. Um, Your house has burglary proof. Yes. Okay. Every house in Nigeria is in. I don't know. Some people may choose to. No, 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 yeah. no. But it's have, not have. having is because is an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Everybody, yeah. every house, it's actually is presumed, and the conversation that. I want us to, and that's why I'm, I said to Chuka, you know, there needs to be conferences about this. Yeah. Because once you start having a conversation, people start investigating. Well, the irony of it is when I, was house, when I was house hunting, I saw a house without burglary proof, and I was afraid. Impressed. Not for the burglar, I was worried okay. for the children. Because I said, yeah. this one opens the window, we're up. I said, just, woo. I said, no, I need <laughs> oh, some bars. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh. Well, yes, yeah, some experience serve as eye-openers. That certainly was one for me. Here's hoping we can learn from our experience, as I've learned from mine, after the break, which is sounds an alarm of her own. Stay tuned. In the midst of our apparent and obvious struggles, I want to highlight a silent epidemic, the loss of our innate identity. We reference colonialism. Some even speak of neo-colonialism, as though it was a thing of the past or a thing outside of us. But what I speak of today is an internal disease. It is why we appear to have an inferiority complex of sorts. We have sub subconsciously and maybe even consciously adopted a mindset that all things Western is progressive and all things indigenous and even African is regressive. We are only beginning to embrace the Afrocentric look, as you can see, you know, as chic and only just. Why does it matter? Since we may assert that like fashion, trends and culture are cyclical in evolution. A slight look beneath the surface reveals to us that our very foundational thoughts are borrowed, a kind of cut and paste from our political systems to our business models, even to those who set up vital infrastructure like our rail systems, roads, telecommunication systems, etc. We clearly don't trust ourselves and our national low self-esteem comes at a cost. We're selling ourselves out. This may well be the reason our adopted systems don't seem to be working for us. A case of David when he went up against Goliath and refused to take Saul's armor because he hadn't proved it yet. It wasn't fit for purpose. We need to discover our own catapult to overcome our Goliaths. I propose we go back to the drawing board. After all, we have intelligent Nigerians both home and abroad with original thoughts. We need to employ our best brains to come up with homegrown solutions to our national problems. Solutions that show an understanding and appreciation of the real native issues at stake. Essentially, we need to appreciate the true cost of westernization and be ready to pay the price of true nationalism, which involves painstaking consultations and public engagement. Apart from this, I'm convinced that we will not make real progress as a people. Hmm. Yeah, so who Coffee. feels something? Who wants to say uh, something? Very, I, I feel, very oh, go ahead. No, very, no, very go deep. Ahead. Thank you. Um, as you were reading that, it just occurred to me that um, this month, I think, uh, we are celebrating, not celebrating, we are marking 400 years mm. of the day when the first black people 
we are taking from yeah. Africa into yeah. ships yeah. heading yes. for America. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now we have a people in America that are the most advanced mm -hmm. of us black people, mm. yet they really have no identity. They have not been accepted. They are still suffering segregation. And you look down, it affects even us here. They are the mm. most advanced. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here we are. Wanting to be like Wanting them. Wanting to be like them. Yeah. Imagine so that. you were right on point Thank you. when you said we should now start looking inwards mm -hmm. at our native ways of doing things. Earn it. We have to earn that right to be considered not inferior anymore, mm. but even superior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it won't come easy, it won't che come cheap. Mm -hmm. Because anywhere you turn to in the world now, whether we like it or not, they still look down on us mm -hmm. yes. for the sake of our skin yes. as inferior. Mm -hmm. So for that to change would require not just a mental reorientation of our own people, but for us to physically go and earn it. Exactly. That's why the culture is very important. Mm -hmm. We can't, no, we can't I, earn absolutely. it technologically. Yes. We yeah. can't earn it through engineering yeah. or architecture yes. or yes. whatever. Yes. But that which we have, which is unique to us, mm -hmm. You see the prostrations, mm -hmm. the turning of our women when they meet their chiefs, oh, yeah. mm. the dance, it's the fashion, all is all part, you know, yeah. all of that it's, is yes. something we can actually use to drive this change that mm -hmm. we truly deserve. Mm -hmm. I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I, what I get from what she said, and I think, you know, Shagun summed it up quite well. So mm, he here's, here's, here's where mm -hmm. I would come from. And I think what you're saying is we need to be more nuanced to us. Mm -hmm. So. I've often said democracy is not one size fits all. Mm. Nigeria's democracy cannot be the same democracy that's practiced in the West because we are unique in our behavior. Mm -hmm. We have, like you said, peculiarities and nuances that just are Nigerians. You know, and some, some, some would call it disobedience, some would call it, you know, uncultured, where a papi would call it something else, whatever it is. You know, we do. But however, and because we also have this ethnic thing, we have this, if you like, sort of uneasy marriage of ethnicity that we all still trying to accept and adapt nice. and, you know, pretend it's working. Mm. Even though I think it's working, you think it's not working, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I think you it know. can work. But gen which I, be I know, be I believe in the Nigeria. It may yeah, not be working, but it can work. So because we have all of that, I think we're at the place, and I think that's what you're saying is mm. that, or that's what I get from what you're saying. We're at the place now where we've learnt from the West. Mm -hmm. Lent, not learnt, lent from yes, the West. We good. now know it's not working. Mm -hmm. Let's throw away the trash, you know. As we say in Yoruba, Komotuntungwole, it's time. Mm. It's time for us to actually now seek for a solution within. And, if this, and, and we mm. talked about the Absolutely. kings, that's it. the kings and queens mm. of the past yes. who used to rule, you know, communities and, and be premiers and stuff and perhaps we need to go back there and see how things are done we're not saying we need to go back to primitive behavior mm -hmm. but if you don't respect and imbibe and claw from your history how do you expect to find the path forward because mm. clearly we're not going forward yeah, no, actually we're no, going no, backwards i mean again just to, yeah. just to continue okay, on, on that on. because it seems mm. we're all flowing mm. um you know because i feel that a lot of what we see today even when we want to do enforce what we call our democracy which is borrowed we do it in a very detached way. So you maybe just use for an example, you want to enforce Roga. But mm. you don't bother to go and consult with the people. So it's not, there's nothing organic about the way we govern. So mm. you know, why I, I, this appeals to me is that I'm saying, look, let's actually take the time to learn about what it is that makes us who we are, what it is that we value as a people. Because mm. the only way you're going to get a kind of a harmonized you know, ethnic representation of who we are is if you take the time to go and look at uh, uh, the people, talk with them, engage with them. And, and, and have a consultation. I know it, it, it seems a bit, you know, like you, a lot of people avoid it because they feel it's tedious, they just want to come and lord it over you, but that's why you have this cut and paste kind of thing we're doing now that I doesn't seem know. to be working. You need to take the time to do that I, because I liken it to, you know, you have What you're have, saying is talk to the people. Engage the people. Engage, engage the with people. them, try and discover. But that's what politics, that's what, what's it called, campaigning, voting, yada, yada, yada. Do they really? It's no, 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 but that is yeah, what yeah, he's supposed yeah, to yeah. do, mm. is my point. It mm. do and it it's, but, clearly, yeah. it's clearly it's not working. Because they're not doing it. It's an adaptation of Western. These are all Western precepts. That's right, yes. We are still saying the same thing. This world is not designed by the architects for us.
to succeed. Yeah. It is not designed for us to succeed. Mm. It is designed so that we will remain poor. Democracy is designed enrich, to, to, to favor to the rich. Well, you, you're, maybe because you're thinking of what I'm saying as democracy. I'm just simply saying that since we don't know what works for us yet, maybe part of going back to drawing bodies to actually take time and study and engage with the people on the ground because we're not who we were then, so you can't even go back to then. We're not who we, we are according to the Western ideology, so you really need to engage because people are in this place where they're evolving themselves. You need to take the time to study them, can to engage I, with let, them. Let me just say, like, I liked what Ireti brought in because she said, let's go back and see, you know, we have civilizations. Yes, that, we have that, civilizations. And we can examine them. And, you know, yes. like, for instance, you have the, the Malian uh, dynasties, you have, um, um, what's the mm -hmm. other one? The uh, Benin, Benin, the Benin civilization, Ebos. even yeah, we, the, we, um, we have but, but you can use them as reference, go, but if you yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, you don't even want so to go yeah. back you that can. far. That's what yeah, I'm trying. You go back a few years okay. ago, when we had a, an Awolo war in Western Nigeria yeah. that set the pace, yeah. not just for us in Africa, mm, but even for some Western countries. You just go back and see what Absolutely. you but I mean, I mean, Relevant today as they were. Part of then. why I'm still talking about this human one-on-one -on -one engagement, I know it sounds like it's not uh, something you can do overnight, is if you look at, just use a family setting. A lot of our youths now are not, you may say, well, when I was young and you try and train a child the way you were trained, you just miss out. The child is now, um, uh, uh, she, they're somewhere between the Western ideology and, so you're not going to impose the way you were brought up on them. Yeah. You need to engage them and take what, is yeah. actually currently okay. on the I, ground. Actually very good because I've been, uh, you know, as an architect, pushing for uh, an Afrocentric view to do mm. things. The truth is we must not look at westernization mm. as negative. Yes. We should see it as a disruption, a disjunction, yes. Yes. Where, and take it as the way Part to of our history. find a new way, way. Yeah. that Fantastic. the past will guide us to yes. know what to do. Yes. Fantastic. We, we can't say no to technology. That's what China did. No, exactly. That's what China did. That's, China China That's what Brazil yeah. did. Yeah. That's what Japan did. Yes. That's what yeah. we should do. I think we're arriving yeah. at the We discussed That's that what the we other day. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what China does. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> Value as well as beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So may that eye be an enlightened one. In the meantime, do keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, when we'll be engaging you with more topical conversations, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye. Bye bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible. Like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.